Hey there, folks. Sorry to start a couple of minutes late. I am Chuck Moran, and I am joined by a very special guest today during our studio hours for May 10th. Late. I am Chuck Moran. Hang on one second. Let me kill off one of these broadcasts I've got going on. Hang on one second. All right. Okay. I had myself playing in the background. I just... Um, I must love myself so much that I, I just can't get enough of myself. Anyway, I am very happy to have you join us today, whether you're watching the live broadcast on YouTube or on the um, Facebook online video mastery page. Either one will work. And if you are here for the replay, welcome. One of the things that we're trying to do with all of these studio hours is to teach people how to make videos that don't suck. That's the that's really the bottom line to our um, what our mission statement is. Anyway, I'm joined today by a, a good friend and a digital marketing consultant uh, named Angelica Dusik. And Angelica and I have known each other and worked together for about six years. And um, I am very happy to have her on board today. And she is going to address, let me just put her title up here. She's going to address a really important title um, or topic that I think has flown under a lot of people's radar and honestly, including mine. I've been building websites since 1996 and um, you know, video has gotten to be a bigger and bigger thing as we've gone along. And uh, <clears throat> I've just started to realize that video really does help you with your search engine optimization. And of course, we all want as much search engine optimization assistance as we can get. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring Angelica on here in a second. The only thing about from a housekeeping viewpoint, if you have any questions as we go, please go ahead and comment in the chat. And uh, we may stop and take those as they come up or uh, just pause part of the way through. But as usual, these sessions are very informal and um, we're just glad that you're here. So feel free to pop in and um, interrupt us if you have something that you'd like to, us to address either with a question or from a comment. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and ask Angelica to take the stage and um, go ahead with her presentation. Angelica, welcome. Hi, hello, I hope you can hear me. Uh, first of all, Chuck, thank you so much for the invite. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, talk today about the importance of SEO uh, for uh, anybody that does video. So, you know, I don't think people sometimes connect the two. So I would be more than happy to share my, my two cents on it. Um, maybe a little bit about myself first. So my background is in digital marketing. I've been in digital marketing since 2010 and uh, my focus is Google. So Google ads and SEO is my forte, although I do full stack digital marketing. Uh, so, you know, uh, I've been um, a good friend with Google for like 10 years or so. So, you know, I know a couple of tips and tricks that I really enjoy sharing with other people. Uh, you know, Google sometimes acts like Coca-Cola. They're trying to like, you know, keep their recipe a uh, secret, but you know, like I think that, you know, nothing should be a secret about it. So, you know, I really like sharing my knowledge on like, you know, what you can do to improve your SEO. Yeah, that's great. I appreciate the backgrounder. Um, <clears throat> I know that you all, you also teach SEO, right? And tell yes. you, yeah, I teach SEO at a local college and uh, I also teach like, you know, random conferences. Uh, I have like, you know, the, the whole Google partners thing going on. So, you know, I've been around in, in this area. So, uh, you know, and uh, obviously video uh, became popular, I think, okay, you know, YouTube aside. Uh, for social media purposes and then you know people just kind of see it as like you know a way to position their brand on social media which obviously is a huge thing uh, and you know if they're creating videos for websites they're usually not doing it for SEO purposes they're usually doing it for uh, just the purposes of brand awareness and visualization of whatever service they're offering uh, or product uh, so I think, you know, it's about time to, to talk a little bit about, you know, like how you can utilize the video you're already working on for SEO as well. Great. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and bring up your slideshow and you can go ahead and dive in. Okay. So, uh, and as you said, uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. 
uh, I can see on, on my screen any comments or chats that pop up. So if anybody wants to join in on the conversation, feel free to do so. Uh, and, you know, uh, if you have any questions or even if you want to do an analysis of like your own website or video on your website uh, in terms of SEO, feel free to join in. So, yeah. Cool. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's start, I guess, with the basics. Uh, I'm guessing everybody knows what SEO is, but, you know, let's get it out of the way. So SEO or search engine optimization basically means, you know, like, or how, what you can do to improve your website so that you can pop up in the, you know, on um, one of the first, the first result in Google search for a specific keyword that best describes your product or service. So, uh, you know, basically what SEO is, is a whole bunch of techniques uh, that you can do uh, that you can apply to your website and your business in order to achieve that goal. Uh, obviously when we say, SEO, we usually think of Google, although it's not just Google. As I said, SEO is search engine optimization, meaning it's optimizing your website for any search engine. So Google being Yahoo or something else. Uh, but I guess, you know, Google is the, the, the main one and, you know, most people are familiar with it. But uh, the, the logic behind SEO tactics is similar to all search engines. So, you know, once we learn what we can do for Google, both Bing and Yahoo and any other are going to love it, I, I guess, except, you know, the, the dark web ones. <laughs> they have a different <laughs> approach to it. So, uh, you know, yeah. for, for, any, for anybody creating videos for the dark web, we're going to do that off screen. <laughs> we're going to discuss <laughs> that one. Uh, okay, so uh, obviously the main point of SEO is, you know, like if, so, if you're selling, uh, you know, uh, lawnmowers, you want to be, you know, on the first page, first page of Google uh, when somebody in your area where you deliver your lawnmowers Google's alone or right so you know it, it's fairly simple and then you know most of the people just see SEO as content in terms of like adding text to the website where you're going to put your keywords and you know obviously that is a huge part of it you know like you can't really position your website for you know any keywords related to I don't know headphones unless you actually write about headphones right so you know it it, it obviously it makes a lot of sense, but not, uh, content as in text on the website is just one part of the whole SEO strategy. You have the whole shebang about how the website should be optimized in terms of technicalities of it. You know, what kind of technical approach you need to have to the website in order for it to be positioned well in Google, in order for Google to love it. Uh, because obviously Google is not a person, uh, Google, actually uses bots that, you know, go through your website and figure out what is it that you're selling and then tell it to Google, right? Okay, okay, this guy on this domain sells this and that and his website is about this and that. And, you know, and then they say, okay, from a technical standpoint, it is easy to navigate. It is fast. It is responsive. It is good on mobile. Everything, you know, Google wants to give its users not only the answer to their question, because, you know, that's, that's easy. Like, you know, today you have so many websites that, you know, sell headphones. So how you're going to get, you know, like how you're going to be on top. It's not just about selling headphones. It's about giving your users, your visitors, the best possible user experience when they come to the site. So, you know, uh, that's where video actually plays a huge role. You know, like when they come to the site, they can see the video of the headphones, but also that video looks good on mobile phones. That video, you know, is, uh, has certain things we're going to talk about in the next slides, you know, that makes it easier to understand for Google bots as well. So, you know, what is very fascinating about SEO, at least fascinating to me, I guess I don't have a life, is, uh, you know, uh, that you're not only working for a user, like a human one, uh, you actually need to be thinking everything that you do, you need to be thinking also how Google will see it. And Google, as I said, is not a person. So you're always working on to, you have to find a balance. You have to find, you know, a sweet spot between uh, how a Google bot sees it and making it easy for a robot to understand and making it good for the end user. So that's basically what we're going to talk about. In these that's, that's really that's really something. I <clears throat> one thing I'd just like to amplify real quickly is that uh, what Angelica, Angelica was just talking about 
the experience that Google wants you to have as a person who is using Google to find things. That's, um, and it, this sounds kind of counterintuitive, but what she was just mentioning about your site loading speed is super important because they Google will actually punish you if you've got a slow loading site. Now, of course, these days your viewers will punish you by clicking off and going someplace else. But yep. if your pictures are oversized or uh, not optimized properly, Google will push you down in the search engine beca rankings because you are giving their customers a bad experience. So just like Angelica is saying, you need to think about this as a cohesive strategy, um, both with text, video, loading speed, and all the other things that make your website what it should be today. I mean, you know, it's, it's all about, you know, the, the, the pe people not having, like, you know, people having, like, a focus of, you know, a goldfish. Like, you know, if, you're, if they're not seeing what they need in, like, three seconds, you're going to lose them. So, you know, uh, and that applies to the website speed for starters, right? You know, if, if the website doesn't load, you're going to lose people, right? If the video doesn't load in time, you're going to lose them. And not to mention if it's not loading good on, on mobile phones, if it's mm -hmm. not responsive. You know, if a website is not responsive, everybody is now on their phones, right? Uh, you know, depending on the niche we're talking about, uh, I'd say like up to 80% of visits to today's websites come from mobile phones. Wow. And, you know, so, uh, and even in like traditionally more uh, desktop oriented websites, such as e-commerce, we can also see that most of the people are coming from mobile as well. So, you know, people are very well versed on, on you know, doing stuff on mobile phones. So, uh, you know, make it count, <laughs> right? So let's see what we have here. So now we know that video is important for SEO. And, you know, as we said, um, you know, Google cares about video, which means you need to care about it too. Obviously, if you are here right now or you're watching this video you probably do care about videos since you know you're you join in on, on the city hours but uh you know you need to care about it from the google's perspective right uh um some i wouldn't necessarily agree with cisco with this uh number that says you know that as much as 80 percent of 81 percent of traffic is coming from video consumption i think that takes into account like YouTube and you know all that in which case probably uh, but still you know uh, Google loves video uh, Google looks the and Google has the whole section right when you're searching for something you have you know the results you have the images you have the video right and it doesn't necessarily only have to be YouTube so you know with only with your video you can position yourself uh, for specific keywords which you know can make or break your, your business um video as we already know is something that can bring people to your site it can bring people to your site and it can keep people on your site these are two very important things because first of all google looks at how popular a website is meaning how much incoming traffic you have right so you know if you have uh enough incoming traffic google sees that you're popular and makes you uh, rank better in google search results right which, you know, you want, you want that. But also, uh, Google looks at, you know, how long people stay on your site once they're there. Because that signalizes how high of a quality content you have on your website, right? If people are staying longer on your website, that means that your website is good. That means that your content is good, meaning Google wants to promote you more, wants to position you better in the search results, right? So, uh, there you go. <laughs> so um, what, uh, how does video help in that? Obviously it helps by bringing people to the site. And if you share that video on social media, whatever, and then with a link to the website, obviously it's gonna bring them here. Also, if you're positioned in web video results, you're gonna bring people to the site. And also if a video is engaging, if a video is good, and if you're listening to Chuck, then you know how to make an engaging good video, right? I hope by now. So, you know, once you've created a highly engaging video, you're gonna keep people there. And if you keep people on the site, you're gonna signal to Google your website is good. Uh, another hot uh, trick you can do on the website to keep people longer on your website is 
add a lot of internal links. So what you can do is also on other pages, let's say that you uploaded your video on the About Us page where you explain, you know, something about your company or your team or whatever, right? Uh, but you can also like, you know, in another section of the website, for example, when you're writing about like, you know, so you have the about page and then you have like, you know, looking for new people that want to join the team. And then you can say, okay, you can see more about us and our company culture here. Click on the link to watch the video. And then, you know, people are on the page where they're looking for work, but they're going to click on the link, go to the other page, watch the whole video. And that's already you keeping somebody on your website for mm -hmm. like five minutes straight, which signals to Google that your website knows what it's doing. Uh, so, you know, I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to stop me. So this is literally what I was talking about right now. So video generates traffic and increases time spent on the site. Uh, let's talk about sales. If you are selling something on your website, you are, you know, well, I mean, we are all selling something, right? You don't even necessarily have to have an e-commerce website in order for you to want to sell something on your site. If you, you know, like you want somebody to con contact you regarding your services or whatever, right? Even if you're just building brand awareness, you are selling yourself or your brand. So ultimately, you want to have conversions. If you don't know by now what conversions are, conversions are basically your whatever it is that your sale is. It doesn't necessarily have to be somebody putting something in the shopping cart and checking out, but you know, you are selling something. You want uh, the person that's visiting your website to do a specific thing, you know, whether it is to contact you, to call you, to send you a message, to submit a contact form on your website, you know, you want them to do something. So uh, video is gonna help you do that. People are visual beings, right? So, you know, like they are gonna watch your video and, you know, if the video is done in the right way and explains what they need, they're twice as likely to make a purchase and complete that conversion action than when you don't have any kind of video content. Also for e-commerce, if you have a website that's e-commerce, you're actually selling something. Uh, some of the latest Google algorithm tweaks actually put heavy emphasis on uh, the, the product pages that have like video explanation of the product or how to use a product. So if you have something like that, it's gonna help tremendously with your SEO. And also obviously we all wanna know what we're buying and you know, see it in different angles and see it in action. So if that's something that you can apply, always do so. So quick question. <clears throat> so you're, <clears throat> you're saying that just by having a video on, on a given page, <clears throat> tells Google that that's worth ranking higher in the search engine results. So regardless of maybe how long it is or what keywords are yes. being used and all that yeah. stuff, just simply having an introductory or how-to video about a product or service yes. will help exactly. you. So Very cool. obviously, you know, SEO is, I mean, SEO is just a, a math game, I would say, you know. So, you know, let's say that, you know, uh, for a perfect ranking of a video, you need to have 10 points, right? Uh, but like, you know, just having a video on the page gives you two points. And then, you know, which is two points more than, you know, somebody that doesn't have any video on the page, right? Mm -hmm. So you're already two points, you know, about your competition. And then, you know, like making it like mobile responsive gives you another point. And then, you know, like doing the, the adding keywords in the right places gives you another two points. Obviously, that I'm, I'm oversimplifying things, but that's what I'm trying to say. You know, each and everything you do in SEO is going to be, you know, uh, an upper hand, you know, for you and your know, competition. So, you know, just having a video is going to help your conversion rates. And then if you do it properly and you do all the things I'm, I'm about to, to talk about, you're going to give even more chances to be positioned better. Cool. So, uh, Let's then talk, okay, so obviously if you're creating a product video, your topic is your product. So I'm not gonna talk about that, that's quite obvious. But you know, like if you are just, you know, thinking of like what kind of videos maybe I can create and you know, thinking of the topics you can do, uh, obviously you should think about, you know, the keywords. So the keywords are basically what people are Googling and you know, it relates to your business. Uh, so, um, 
it's a little bit confusing when we say keywords, you know, because they, they don't necessarily have to be words, like, you know, just one word. It can be multiple words or even sentences. So, you know, people Google different things. People Google, you know, diet and then, you know, uh, seven day diet and then how to lose 20 pounds in seven days, right? So all of these three uh, combos are basically your keywords if you are selling some sort of like a nutrition program or whatever, right? So, you know, uh, all of these three make sense, but in a different way, you can use them in a different way on your website. So, you know, if we are saying, okay, just diet, diet is your main keyword, your uh, head keyword, which is, you know, how it's called in SEO. So, you know, you're going to use the word diet, obviously, all, you know, everywhere on your site, because, you know, that's what your site is all about. You're selling a program that's going to help people with their diet and, you know, help them lose weight or whatever, right? So obviously you're going to have that, the word, you know, even without me telling you to use it, you're going to use it by default because, you know, you're a rational human being. So if you're writing about diet, you're going to put it somewhere. Uh, and, you know, obviously it's going to be, you know, naturally placed in maybe in the name of your website, in the domain or in, you know, in the menu in the headings, in the titles of your pages, you know, and obviously some videos without me telling you that are going to be about dieting or maybe, you know, whatever. But then the question is, what about dieting? You know, you're going to, you want to do videos on dieting, but that is such a huge topic. Like, you know, what the deep, what, what are you actually trying to sell in those videos and how to see, you know, which topics are people actually generally curious about? Because, you know, it can be, you know, tips and tricks or, you know, how to lose weight fast, or, you know, it could be about keto, it could be about all sorts of different diets or, you know, like exercise and a bunch of different things. So, you know, how to pick, what are we going to create content about? So uh, keywords are key, you know, and, you know, video strategy should complement the rest of your content strategy. So here are some very useful uh, tools you can use to see what people are Googling about your business, not your business as the name of your business, but you know, the topic of your business, what is it that you're doing? So first I would definitely suggest anybody can use the, the first two and maybe three uh, tools that I'm mentioning here. So first of all is Google Keyword Planner. Google Keyword Planner is part of Google Ads. Uh, it's fairly easy to use. Uh, you, If we have time, I can even share how it looks like. Uh, and um, Basically, you just go in, you enter a topic that, you know, like dieting or whatever, and then Google basically, and you give, you know, Google the location you want to target, right? And then Google is basically going to give you a combinations regarding dieting that people are Googling, you know, like a combination of keywords on the specific location that you entered, you know, specific state or whatever that you're interested in, in where you want to promote, right? Uh, so... Uh, Keyword Planner is good because it can also go a bit broader. So, you know, it understands uh, similar keywords and similar topics. So if you enter a topic diet, it might also give you suggestions on, you know, people are also Googling how to lose weight. It doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. contain the word diet, but Google AI understands that it's a similar topic. So it's going to give you lots of different topics that you can work with. And then you can see how you can use them as topics for the videos. And, you know, obviously depends on like, you know, what you can actually create content about and what actually applies to your business in your specific niche in, in dieting industry, right? And then we have Google Trends. Google Trends is, as you may, uh, you know, uh, guess, basically tells you what is trending on Google in a specific topic. So it's even broader than Keyword Planner. If you give it like, you know, a diet as a keyword, it might give you like, you know, what actually is trending right now and what has been, you know, breaking uh, Google trends, basically, or maybe people are Googling Khloe Kardashian diet or, you know, like how to, I don't know, you know, uh, lose arm fat or something. It's going to give you trending topics mm -hmm. that are even broader and don't necessarily have to contain the word diet in them. Also, a fun fact, the Google Trends also gives you trends on like what is the most Googled topic and, and keyword in a specific area for a specific year. So if you've seen those news somewhere like on social media, oh, you know, like in, in the States or in a specific state, this is what people were Googling in 2022 or whatever. This is where they get it. So you can see what people are Googling the most, not only about your keyword, but like, you know, in general and usually 
it's usually both through reality shows and like NBA and stuff. Yeah. You know, you can see for yourself. <laughs> 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 and then you have the, the you have the third uh, option, which you need to have the website for. It's called Search Console. Uh, Search Console is basically similar to Google Analytics. So you go to Google Search Console, and if you have Google Analytics installed on your website, you will automatically have access to the Search Console. What Search Console does is basically shows you what for what kind of search terms your website popped up in the past. And basically, it gives you an idea how you're positioned for specific keywords and specific topics. So um, Search Console is not going to give you that many ideas of new keywords, but it's going to show you, OK, you're popping up for a keyword, you know, how to lose fat in, in, you know, in arms. Uh, but you don't have any actual content on it on the website. It's time you do that. You know, so you have, you know, you can be very well positioned in this. You're already popping up, even though you don't have that much content about it. Create a video about it. Create some sort of blog post about it. And you have a very good chance to, like, you know, pop up above your competition for that specific keyword or specific topic. So uh, I hope this made sense to you. And then, obviously, if you have some sort of... Um, if you're willing to spend a little bit more money or if you're working with an agency that does your SEO or something, then you know, using some of the paid tools as well obviously helps with keyword research. Some of the most familiar ones are like Ahrefs or SEMrush, but you don't need to use them if you're using these tools correctly uh, that I mentioned above, unless you're really working on, on you know, specifically on SEO and like in a much broader sense, not only on video SEO. Very cool. <clears throat> We've got a question here from Samantha Savage. I'm going to go ahead and put it up on the screen. And um, this is a this is a tricky one, but let's see what you have to say about this one. Okay, uh, so uh, Samantha, uh, I see you, you can't add videos to your website. I'm not sure if the issue is technical, like you don't have uh, an option to add a video, or is the issue that you don't have access to your website. And then you can't add it because you don't have admin privileges. So those are like, you know, two different things. If you can't access the website, then I guess, you know, my answer would be, you know, like bug somebody that can until you can, you're able to add the, the video. And then if you're technically not able to add it as in like, you don't have a place to upload the video, a space on your website, then, you know, it, the answer really depends on what the website is built in. If the, for example, if the website is built in, in uh, yeah, you don't have the option to add videos. Okay, so if it's built in a more popular CMS like WordPress, Shopify, Magento, or something like that, it should be fairly easy to add videos. You can reach out to the developer, you know, like you know, that's taking care of the, your website maintenance, and just ask them to allow you to add media, as in video files. Uh, sometimes developers like to uh, turn off that option because uh, users like to upload huge videos. We're going to talk about it on the next slide. And then in order for, to stop the website from breaking, they simply don't allow adding videos and they don't give the option to the end user. So, you know, that might be the reason why you're, you don't have the option to add videos. So the question I think would be to figure out why and who actually is not giving you that option. Is it because you know the CMS allows it, but the developer turned it off? Is it because it's a specific CMS and nobody ever thought about you know the possibility of adding videos, which I'm seriously doubt, but you know maybe, uh, or is it the the reason that you know like you don't have ac access high enough to be able to add the videos? I'm so, guessing, you know, I'm thinking what <clears throat> what she's saying is that uh, it was created by uh, the Girls on the Run International, and they. They want to tightly control the content. And so she literally doesn't have access, um, <clears throat> doesn't have permission to, to, to get into the website because it's being controlled by a central location. So the other thing you can do, Samantha, is send her send the, this link <laughs> to those folks and, um, and tell them that, you know, how important video is. They may already be using video to a certain extent on there. But one suggestion I have that would help you all and help additional ha help uh, the chapters um, would be to have a place where they could vet videos from you all at the local level and then put them onto a, a given page, uh, which would help them in search engine optimization and then also help you locally as well. So 
Sam's got another comment here. Girls on the Run International yeah. has restrictions. Yeah, she just so. she just explained. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so. I mean, you know, it, it's always in. I mean, I understand the issue of like you know, like when you don't really have a complete, uh, you know, control over the your content and you have to like you know ask somebody else for permission or whatever. Uh, but you know, I would probably suggest like when you're working with them on your content strategy and your marketing strategy and you know if you're involved in it in any way to push for the video content you know to push for adding more video content to the site and you know if you're already creating in social media then repurposing it for the website so you know uh i would probably suggest you know you try and reach out to whoever is needed that you know and explain to them why is it important very good uh, so yeah, feel free to ask any any questions really. Uh, so uh, let's talk about a little bit more about keywords, right? So uh, yeah, you know, like I guess video is you know worth a thousand words, but you still need to put words somewhere. Uh, of course, Samantha, uh, thank you. I'm just sorry I don't have any better suggestion for you. You know, if your hands are tied at this moment, uh, the only thing I can suggest is you know be you know, to try and be more, you know, uh, forceful in like explaining why video is important for, for their website. Um, so for for uh, the keywords that we mentioned, obviously the first use of keywords is gonna be, you know, finding the right topic uh, and, you know, you're gonna do that. But then once you've created the video, uh, you can place the keywords in specific parts of the video. So let's think about the description of the video. So if you have, you know, when you're uploading the video, you have a headline, which is basically the title of the video. Obviously think about the title, think about the headline, make it short and sweet, make it, you know, interesting for people to click on and try to use the main keywords, the topic, uh, you know, that the, the video is all about, right? What is important about headlines and also other tags on the on the video and also actually like on every piece of content you have on the site is that it shouldn't be too long um why is that important because if it's too long like if when you watch like google search results right the page um you sometimes see like you see the results and then you see certain parts of the content being cut off like for example uh descriptions of specific search results are being cut off especially on mobile because they're too long and then you know google cuts them off because you can't really see everything and then it doesn't look good right if it's like in the middle of the sentence so you know try to make it short and sweet so that you know the the, the when people are looking at it from mobile the the description and the headline are not cut off then you have like the three dots right so that people can read in the search results what the what your uh what your video is all about right so when you're thinking about descriptions make it you know short and sweet right you know try to write it as interesting as you can because you know you want people to click on it you want people to be informed of, what, of what's in the video but then again you don't want to give out everything that's going to be in the video because then they won't watch it right so you know try to make it a little bit clickbaity right but not you know not make it you know uh too clickbait right you still want to give them some information on what the video is all about so you know i, I guess a good a good you know example would probably be you know like if you are doing a video on you know how to lose arm fat and you're making like a video on, on exercises, right? Uh, you probably don't want to make the description like, you know, unbelievable, you know, only three days you're going to be a new person, you know, click here, buy my product. And, you know, you're going to, I'm going to make you into a Kardashian in three days, you know, maybe it works for some people, but, you know, usually it, it, it doesn't for most normal people, I guess. Uh, so, you know, um, and also it gives nothing to Google. You know, like, because people are not going to be Googling, you know, turn me into Khloe Kardashian in three days. Maybe somebody is, but, you know, most people are, are not. And most people are aware that's not going to happen, right? Uh, so, you know, uh, what you can do instead is, you know, use the keywords, but still make it engaging. So, you know, uh, proven tips and tricks to lose arm fat, uh, you know, get ready for summer with me. Uh, you know, just, you know, 15 hours of your day is enough. Uh, and, you know, contact me for more details or something, you know, so we're going to have, you know, call to action, 
we're going to give them information that people usually want to know, like, you know, like how long it's going to take, is it expensive or whatever, what can I expect? And also, you know, Google crawler is going to understand, okay, this is a video about, you know, arm fat exercises and for people that want to lose arm fat, okay, you know, that's what I'm going to position it about. And, you know, so basically back to the beginning, try to find the perfect balance between, you know, Google understanding your video because Google doesn't understand nuances and, you know, doesn't understand, you know, like hyper creativity in, in your, in your, in your texts and still making it interesting and engaging for the users. Uh, also, even one other thing that you need to be considerate of when you're thinking about videos on websites is the URL structure. So, you know, every video has a URL, right? It has the link. So it's usually, you know, your domain slash something slash the name of the video. So just make sure that also that URL has the title of the video in it so that it's not like slash video one, two, three, four, five dot MP4 or whatever, you know, that, but it actually is the name of the video. For, on most websites, it does it automatically in most CMSs, but you know, not all of them. So just make sure when you're uploading it or like when the developers are uploading, whoever is taking care of your website, that the URL looks decent enough and it actually has the keyword in the URL. It's also important when you're sharing that link all around the web, right? It looks much nicer if it's actually human readable and not just some random numbers in it. Uh, yeah. Quick question here. <clears throat> so if we get, um, if, if we're building a YouTube channel and we're putting, the, the thing that I teach and think really works the best is to have a YouTube channel upload your videos to YouTube and then embed them on your website. And I know you're going to talk about embedding uh, here in a second. But <clears throat> so my question is, doesn't it make sense to follow these directions about the descriptions, the headline meta tags and the URL structure on both platforms? In other words, YouTube yes. and your, your website. Yeah. So yeah. YouTube will actually generate a transcript at this point. I still don't really understand how you can, some people seem to have that little button that says click to show transcript, but there is a way where you can actually download the transcript that YouTube generates. And you can actually just grab that and go copy and paste it into the blog post that goes with your video on your website. So if any of this sounds a little too complicated, um, feel free to reach out to me or to Angelica and we will certainly help you uh, get that, that kind of thing straight. But my basic question is, does it make sense to follow the same basic pattern both on YouTube and on your website for descriptions, your headlines, meta tags and all that? It makes a lot of sense, you know, because I mean, YouTube is Google, right? It's Google's right. product so you know like the, the logic is literally the same so you know if you have good you know, the only thing I mean yeah it's actually literally the same because like on YouTube engagement and like the number of subscribers is important and on the website the number you know engagement and the number of visitors is important so you know again we have the same logic so you know if you have a YouTube channel that's you know widely popular and you know people are engaging you know with your videos and watching a lot of your videos and you know uh, you're bringing traffic to your YouTube channel again you're gonna pop up more than you know some other videos uh, on the same topic and it's literally the same logic with, with websites, right? And then, you know, if you have a description that's engaging and contains keywords that are important, uh, and, you know, if the headline and the topic is important for your users, uh, you're gonna pop up higher in, you know, in the search results on YouTube as well as in Google. Obviously, both for Google and for YouTube, you can boost your visibility through Google Ads. I wasn't actually, you know, focused here too much about Google Ads, otherwise we'd be here all night, uh, <laughs> but, you know, um, you can always do that on, on both uh, on both platforms, right? You can boost your visibility at least until your SEO or your organic rankings come, you know, swinging in full effect. Uh, until you do that, you can pay for your keywords basically on both YouTube and Google. Gotcha. Great. So <clears throat> let's see what else we have here. So uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about technicalities. Um, when you're uploading the video to your site, hopefully you'll be able to, uh, and you know, like, uh, 
and hopefully Samantha will be soon, <laughs> saying a fingers crossed. Uh, but uh, so when you're uploading the video on your website, you can do it directly. Obviously, you can create the video file, you can upload it, use you know a specific place uh, on the site. But uh, generally speaking, video files are usually a little bit too big in terms of like you know gigabytes, and you know they can make the site load slower, they can slow down the site's response. So, uh, and that can affect your SEO as well. That can obviously affect your uh, user experience. You know, nobody wants to wait for the website that loads, you know, 20 minutes. And, you know, always think about people that are not maybe having some internet issues or they don't have 5G or whatever. So, you know, if you're making, if they have, you know, not that good of a connectivity, they have some connectivity issues, and then you have a website that loads slower, even on like, you know, better website speeds, right? You're gonna cause a lot of, uh, you know, concern with your, with your website visitors that aren't gonna be able to see what is happening on your site in the video that's not loading. Obviously, same for Google. Google doesn't like slow websites. It's actually a huge part of the technical optimization. So, you know, if you wanna avoid that, you're probably better off with uploading your website first to like a streaming platform like YouTube. So we just talked about YouTube. So we're basically just naturally, uh, you know, progressing that way. So, you know, you upload it there. Uh, you can build your own following on YouTube, you know, simultaneously with this. It's actually, you know, helps the whole thing, right? So, you know, uh, because as I said, Google is Google and Google loves all Google platforms. So, you know, like if you're positioning yourself on YouTube, it can only help you with your general SEO for your website. So you can upload it to YouTube and then basically just embed it to your website as like a iframe that, you know, where basically your, your video is being loaded. Uh, the end user is, you know, none the wiser. They just see the video, the video loads. They don't care if it's hosted on your website or YouTube, but it makes your site much faster. Uh, if you want to see if your website is slow or fast in Google's eyes, you can use this tool I just mentioned here. It's called PageSpeed Insights. You can just type that in. Uh, the website is going to pop up. It's free to use. You just enter the link of your website, like your domain. And you let Google do its magic. So Google is going to give you um, basically a number between one and 100, uh, where the 100 is the highest score. Obviously, one is the lowest score. The higher score you have, it means your website loads faster. Uh, and it's also going to indicate what kind of issues your website has that's preventing it from loading faster. So, you know, and more often than not, one of those issues is a huge video that's uploaded somewhere on the site. A couple of other points I wanted to amplify here too. Um, <clears throat> the whole point about building your YouTube channel or a key part of it, in addition to what Antielka was just talking about, where it's basically another home for your content because you can you can build an entire audience on that. That, can, that same thing can be said for platforms like Facebook and Twitter as well. But the difference is that YouTube is all video, first of all. So it will pop up in search engines much more quickly um, and be much richer content. The other thing it is, is that it's a, that YouTube is a search engine itself. And so unlike Facebook, if you put a, a video up on Facebook today and then you put up a post tomorrow, now your video went down a spot and then you put up two more posts, it's gonna keep going down. Well, on YouTube, people are still getting massive hits from years ago, even months ago um, on, you know, in their, in their search results. So people will type in like, you know, losing arm fat. And if you've got a relevant video, like Angelica is talking about, they, they will share that with you um, on YouTube, even though it's, you know, a couple, even a couple of years old. The other thing about um, the concept of embedding videos with either an iframe or a different type of technology. So in other words, it's sitting actually on YouTube, but you're basically calling it into your website. Um, the servers that websites sit on typically, especially the, the lesser um, brand name uh, website hosts, those servers are really not optimized for video. So not only will that big file slow your video, slow your, your ranking, your um, load speed down and hurt your ranking, but those, that server is really not designed in a lot of cases for video. On the other hand, YouTube is hyper-designed 
to deliver very quickly. And if you, I mean, if you think about it, when you click on a title, you, your, your video is right there, whether it's on your phone or your desktop, ready for you to consume. So that pairing between your website, whatever type of website you have, whether it's flat HTML, WordPress, any, uh, Squarespace, any of them, it's really best to put your video up on YouTube or Vimeo, um, some of the other platforms, but then embed it um, in, in, in the website uh, to really maximize both sides. So yeah. Exactly. I mean, what, what is also, you, you raise an interesting point there. Um, you mentioned that like on social media, the, you know, I think the lifespan of any, uh, any content is quite, uh, you know, quite short, <laughs> right? You know, like you can become viral and you're going to be viral for a few days and then basically that's it. Uh, for Google and YouTube, it's the opposite. So actually Google values more websites that exist for longer. So, you know, because your SEO can only become better over time if you're working on it because you're going to gain more traction, you're going to get more people, right? You're going to get more visits, people are going to be more on your website. And then, you know, uh, basically, uh, it's actually even much more likely that, you know, you're going to pop up more often if you've been there for longer. So it's actually a huge part of something called domain authority. So domain authority is a number that Google gives to each specific website based on the quality of the website, the user experience, their website traffic, but also their entire history. So the longer you've been around, and it's never too late to start, right? You know, just like with everything else in life, the longer you've been around, you're going to have a higher domain authority and hopefully higher ranking. So, you know, it's completely different than social media. There we go. <laughs> Seriously, it's about 12 seconds if you even get to see it. Uh exactly. I think I lost Chuck for some reason, but I guess I'm still here. So hopefully you can see me. And I hope he'll come back. Uh, so uh, I think he went on to like read a tweet or something. No, there you go. I, I, I just said you went on to read a tweet or something, and you're back in <laughs> <Yeah>. twelve seconds. <laughs> no, it's a it's a technical thing with my with my mouse. If I if I brush my mouse the wrong way, it will take me off whatever page I'm on. No, worries. I love this thing except for that. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so yeah. Uh, what you just said, you know, it makes sense. But on the other hand, it's completely different when it comes to video. I mean, obviously, uh, I guess I pro you probably know what like the first video ever was, you know, which was uploaded on YouTube. It was made by the YouTube founder. And he was like, you know, he just filmed the day in the zoo. He went to the zoo and he uploaded the video. And he was like, himself was like, you know, nobody's going to watch that. <laughs> and the video is still around. You can find it on YouTube, obviously. So, you know, like the, the, the longer you've been uh, on Google and YouTube, the better for you. And obviously, you know, uh, if you start today, you're going to be, you know, 100% longer on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on Google than somebody who started tomorrow. So there you go. Right. Uh, so let's see what else we have here. Uh, obviously, what else is important? People usually ask, you know, how long should the video be? Uh, Obviously, I'm going to be like, you know, like take it with a grain of salt. If you're actually talking about something useful, make it longer. Uh, I'm just here basically talking more about like some sort of presentational websites that are just there to draw attention. Uh, in that case, make it, you know, last between 30 and 90 seconds. But obviously, if you're talking about something more substantial or, you know, like showcasing a product that has like multiple features or whatever, feel free to make it longer. Uh, but Always, always make the first seconds count. As we said, you know, people have banner blindness. Like people are tired of, you know, too much content. Uh, it's, you know, and um, if you're not attracting their attention in the first few seconds, you're probably lost them forever. So, you know, uh, that's why uh, an engaging title and an engaging thumbnail is going to be important, right? Because you know they're gonna see that first, and you know decide if they want to engage further, interact further with your with your video, uh, and obviously add call to actions whenever possible. What are call to actions? Call to actions are basically uh, you know you calling you asking them to do the, whatever your conversion is. So you know contact us, uh, subscribe, uh, you know uh, join in, uh, whatever you know like. 
ask them to do what you want them to do. Don't expect people, you know, to just guess what they need to do. Nobody wants to engage more brain power than they actually need to. So, you know, tell them what you what they what you want them to do. Uh, so, you know, this will help you uh, engage your audience more with your content, with your video content, right? Uh, so, as uh, uh, let me just go a little one step back. Uh, so, SEO basically contains of three different things. One is the technical SEO, which is basically, you know, the speed of the website, the, the responsiveness, and we talked about that part, right? The second part of SEO is the content part, and we talked about that. The keywords, how to use the keywords, how to find good topics for your websites, right? All that. We talked about that as well. And the third part of SEO is something called off-site SEO or basically link building. What is that all about? Uh, so Google sees website as better if it has a lot of recommendations from other websites. How do you get recommendations from other websites? Uh, basically, if you are doing this whole dieting uh, program, right? If other fitness bloggers write about their experience with your program, and for example, I'm a fitness blogger and I write on my blog, you know, I did this method for losing arm fat that was developed by, you know, this person. And I was very happy with it. Look, look, look how thin I am. Uh, and then, you know, and then I link your website on my blog, both my readers and Google are going to see it as a recommendation, right? And then, you know, the more recommendations for, you know, relevant sources you have all around the internet, Google is going to love you more. So, you know, sees it literally works as recommendations in real life. And then, you know, that, the, that, that whole, the link that comes from other websites and leads to you is a backlink. That's how it's called. So, you know, videos are great for obtaining backlinks because people, you know, if you have a high quality video content, people might share it on their websites, on blogs, on different forums, you know, and then, you know, if we're on a forum for people that want to lose weight, and then I say, okay, listen to this. I saw this video about how to lose our fat in 12 days. And, you know, here you can take a look at it, right? And then you're going to get a link from that forum. So not only am I bringing you customers that potentially might buy your program, I'm also bringing Google uh, traffic, you know, to your website and Google, Google bots. And I'm signaling to Google, okay, look, there are happy customers, you know, like, uh, suggesting this website as a good source for your know, specific keyword, you should rank them better, right? So, and, you know, people are more prone to link into videos uh, and, you know, visual uh, things than to like entire website. So, you know, that's why videos are a great tool for obtaining backlinks as well. So video is amazing thing because it helps you with all three parts of SEO, which not a lot of things do. It can help you with your technical side of things, make your site more faster, make it look better on mobile, and more engaging on mobile, et cetera, bring more traffic, help you with content, help you with keywords, right? Positioning for specific keywords and specific topics, and also help you obtain, obtain more backlinks. And of course, I already mentioned the importance of a video for internal linking, meaning that if you have internal links or links inside your website, right? So if you are on one page reading about something and then you, you link your, your video from another page and you say, oh, you know, here you can see more about it, click here. And then thus you're prolonging the experience on your website and making people be there for longer. Very cool. So yeah, this was all I had to say uh, on the topic. I hope I, I wasn't like, I hope it wasn't too long. It wasn't too boring. Uh, <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. So, so that, do, that, do, do you have any questions? Do, uh, are there, is there anybody reaching out with any questions? Uh, if not, obviously, uh, feel free to reach out if you do, uh, like or if you watch this video later on, uh, here are my contacts. Uh, I'll be more than happy to help if I can. So, you know, just feel free to reach out anything I see related, I guess. That's really great. Actually, I've got one quick question. And that is, we've, we talked about, let's just focus on, on YouTube for a second. So let's say, you know, you've created a really great video. It's, you know, three minutes long, 90 seconds long, whatever it is, you put it up, you pay attention to the file name, you pay attention to the title, to the description, to the tags, 
and you do all that stuff. And then, so then, you know, hopefully Google will find it. Can Google actually go into the video and read keywords as they're being spoken? Or are they, is it really just looking at the transcript that Google or that YouTube presents? Um, Google relies much more on, on transcript, on transcript, okay. on, on descriptions, on the keywords, uh, even on the comments on the, on the video, uh, it's going to understand it much more than what is spoken. Gotcha. Yeah. So we're not really at the point where Google is literally reviewing a video and finding things in it, but well, and you know, we, we are not still in that stage that AI is going to take over the world. So, right. you know, like we're still, <laughs> we'll still yeah. have some time. Yeah, we still have some time. That's great. Before the machines <laughs> decide that we're useless. Um, so, well, and then the final question I have on that same topic is about chapters. So if people are familiar with YouTube chapters, you know, you've got your, you can literally go in and say between zero and 20 seconds is your intro. And then between 21 seconds and the third minute and 20 seconds is when you deliver this content. So are those chapter titles, which you can create actually helping your SEO? Does Google look at those and say, oh, she's talking about, you know, this particular diet strategy in this chapter? Well, again, you know, it's going to be very similar to what I was talking about, you know, with internal links and basically, you know, uh, chapters are going to make your web, your, uh, if they're engaging enough, right, are going to keep people coming back to your channel. Right. Right. So, you know, what you're doing is you're increasing traffic and also, uh, you know, bringing Google bots, uh, like naturally through the chapters because they're all connected, right? So right. Google can follow links. So if you're connecting the chapters, it's going to basically go through. Because Google, when Google comes to a website, and that applies to YouTube as well, uh, Google bots are basically, maybe you can Im imagine, like you picture them as like a bunch of little spiders. They're actually <laughs> sometimes called spiders. Yeah. And if you think about the whole worldwide web being created, you know, like the, then you think of the Google spiders creating the web, then, you know, you can maybe picture how it works. So you have a bunch of spiders, like just, you know, imagine you're in Australia, right? And there's a bunch of spiders everywhere. So, you know, you're, you're count, they've come to your site. They're like crawling around. And basically each spider goes somewhere. So one of the spiders goes to look at the titles. The other goes through the content. And the third one, tries to test the technicalities. The fourth one follows the internal links. The fifth one follows the external links. And then, you know, they just go everywhere and, you know, the, and then they just reunite and they discuss basically between themselves what they found out and <laughs> then, you know, tell it to Google to their like, you know, mother spider, I guess, uh, you know, like uh, what they found out. So basically that's literally how it works. So, you know, the, if the spider that came and went, you know, checked the technicalities is happy, you know, Google is going to be happy. If the spider that, you know, is following external links can follow it to the end with like some logic behind it, he's going to be happy. If, you know, if it can follow internal links and doesn't get lost on the website and only internal links make sense and they all open up and there's no like 404 mistakes or something, he's going to be happy. So, you know, if all the spiders you know, safely arrived home after they like crawled their website, Google is going to be happy. That's great. I had no idea that's how it worked. I, I mean, I well, knew I mean, about yeah. spiders, but I just didn't <laughs> yeah. realize that different spiders have different jobs like bees in a beehive and that they all report back to mother spider. And then she's, she, she says, okay, here, here you go. Here's your information. Well, you know, like uh, my analogy, you know, is not that far off because like, official Google analogy for the keywords, like for the keyword clusters is that, you know, your keywords are like a dragon and then you have like the head of a dragon, the body of a dragon, and then like a tail of a dragon, basically the head of a dragon are your main keywords. And then the body of a dragon are like your less important keywords. And then the long tail keywords are the ones that basically when people Google entire sentences. So, you know, like they're literally using that sort of analogies all the time. My, personal like you know opinion is that you know whoever came up with this was probably high you know seeing drug dragons and all that but you know it stuck out so <laughs> <laughs> gotcha very good well i want to thank everybody who joined us today we're going to go ahead and wrap this up um and as angelica has pointed out and is on this slide 
Uh, go ahead and screenshot this if you're watching live or on the replay and feel free to reach out to her. Follow her on Instagram and LinkedIn and uh, reach out to her via email if you've got questions. She is an absolute ninja at all of this stuff. So if you've got a special use case that um, you'd like her to comment on or help you with, I'm sure she'd be happy to. So Angelica, thank you so much for your time thank today. You. Much appreciated. Thank you for inviting me. All right. We'll talk to you all soon. And remember to get out there and make some great videos. I mean it. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.